Namaskar, good morning, and hello to everybody. I am Anand Kanojia from uh, Intas Animal Health Team, uh, looking after company animal health business. So once again, uh, very pleasant, uh, very uh, I can say that pollution free and blue sky. Good morning to all of you, all our esteemed valuable customers. Thank you so much for uh, sparing time with us to join this program. So uh, the chat time is changing, and with this, we are all of us are going through a very extraordinary and uh, very very challenging time. And it's nearly two months that all of us in the country are nearly locked down. Of course, market is opening now. Think public mobility is increasing, but I think things time will uh, more time will be there for better stability of the market and more client flow. Uh, this situation has brought a very uh, special responsibility on all the healthcare professionals and industry also to maintain their commitment towards the veterinarian and particularly our uh, pet practitioners who are working in a small and big towns. Uh, we at Intas, we want to assure you, reassure you that we are constantly working to support you with uh, consistent supply of our products and solutions that can really help you to serve your patients and of course pet parents. Uh, though we are, we always feel that in this time we will not be able to meet you personally because we are uh, also training our team the, how to safeguard themselves and safeguard you when they visit you. But I think technology has come to our help to stay with you well connected through digitals and uh, virtual platforms. And this is one such platform where we uh, are able to contact you directly and we want, uh, we are able to have you with us uh, on this communication platform. Uh, Intas, as a responsible animal healthcare company, uh, we would always like our, our esteemed clients, our esteemed customers to get more interesting information, knowledge and scientific discussions for upskilling at the need of this hour and strengthen your effort, uh, efforts in the current situation. Uh, when when the time is changing, when the mode of practice is changing, because many of you are engaged in a telemedicine or a remote consultation, probably you are finding one of the uh, tough area is a veterinary dermatology. And applied veterinary dermatology in current situation uh, really demands a whole new set of skills uh, to diagnose, to treat and manage the small animal issues. And that is, of course, dermatology is not easy to uh, uh, handle through the telemedicine or a remote consultation. So we, we believe that applied dermatology it also includes a practical approach to diagnosing, uh, diagnosing and managing the ear uh, diseases, uh, ear uh, challenges in the small animals. And of course, ear uh, being a more complex in the anatomy is equally demanding while going from diagnosis to the treatment. Can I... Uh, Rather, a small animal, chronic and recurrent otitis externa can be extremely challenging, like interna uh, to treat. Uh, it requires multifactorial, step-by-step -step strategic plans and the right uh, choice of the solutions that can uh, help the uh, animal to recover faster. So understanding otitis and its associated causes, contributing various factors, uh, is an important step initial step towards the successful diagnosis and uh, treatment. So uh, we, we, we thought that uh, today we will discuss this uh, scientific discussions on our PetPod webinar. So we once again welcome all of you uh, to our PetPod live sessions, which we do uh, now every one month. And we also plan to increase the frequency of this program uh, as the viewers have demanded that we should have more such programs. So this is our second program after last month. And today we have with us an expert, uh, Dr. B. Nagarajan, to, uh, to uh, join this discussion and explain the challenges uh, in a diagnosis and treatment of otitis in the small animals. I think Dr. B. Nagarajan uh, does not require any introduction. He's a well-known uh, figure in the field of veterinary dermatology in a small animals. Of course, uh, to take to make this discussions formal, uh, we would like to formally uh, introduce him and invite him on this platform. 
He is currently working as a professor and head uh, department of preventive uh, preventive veterinary medicine, uh, Madras Veterinary College, Chennai. Uh, he has done his MBA and PhD from this uh, Madras Veterinary College, and he has worked on various positions. And uh, with this experience, he served as a technical officer in a small animal uh, dermatology ward in the Madras Veterinary College. With his passion in a veterinary dermatology and uh, strong involvement in the small animal clinical and internal medicine practices, he served there for a long time. He, he has played a secretary with the Asian Society of Veterinary Dermatology uh, in the small animal segment. And now he is a uh, board of member uh, in the European Veterinary Dermatology. And currently he is also helping uh, uh, small animal veterinary pra uh, practitioner associations of Tamil Nadu, that is a SAPEC, all of you know. Uh, he is a president of this uh, association and he is providing a very strong guidance uh, in the field of veterinary uh, dermatology through this association. And he is also executive committee member in the Indian Federation of Small Animal Practitioner Associations. Uh, he has published more than 68 research papers and he has written more than three books in this field. He has been a best MVS student. Uh, he got a Baudelaire Award and he also won two international awards and seven national awards for the research paper contributions and publications. So uh, we are privileged uh, to have him on the board and uh, because he was very keen to share the knowledge with all of you to all our esteemed uh, customers, uh, all, all the veterinarians and practitioners across the country. Despite his busy schedule, he accepted our invitation and uh, he was ready to provide more information to how to overcome this uh, special situation, special challenge in this special time. Uh, before I uh, hand over this session to him, uh, let, let, me, uh, let us tell you that this is a live program. So you are with us. We are strongly connected with you uh, in each of you. So we are, uh, they, you have a chat box, text box on the screen to send your views, queries, and questions. Uh, we will have a question and answer session at the end of this program, which is going to be about 50 to 55 minutes from now. And uh, at the end of session, we will be uh, asking the questions on your behalf, which you have forwarded to us. And even if any query is left, you feel so, you are free to send us later also, but all the questions will be answered uh, through your email box, you will be receiving all the answers from our speaker directly within a week. So uh, thank you so much for once again sparing the time, sparing a valuable Sunday because we know that after a week, hectic, uh, long uh, work, you need some rest today. But I think today's discussion will be very, very interesting for all of you. So over to you, Dr. Nagarajan, uh, please take us through your session. Thank you, thank you, Dr. thank you, Mr. Anand, and uh, I sincerely thank Intos Pharmaceuticals for uh, uh, giving me an opportunity to deliver lecture on otitis to our people. Uh, I, we will start. So, we will uh, discuss today about the challenges in diagnosis and treatment of otitis in small animals. Actually, in our uh, field, in small animal practice, we have a lot of problems of challenges and uh, uh, with the treatment or diagnosis in otitis because always it is a recurrent problem. See, like uh, any recurrent issue in our uh, practice, the otitis is also one of the important issues for a, a challenging uh, veterinarian because uh, this otitis always uh, whenever you go for a treatment it will uh, next time he will come with the hematoma and if you treat it again he will come with the otitis and if you are uh, keep on doing uh, culture and sensitivity and other thing it is not going to help uh, then you will get fed up so like owner and uh, dog everyone uh, will be very uh, very very much upset and uh, they got agony so these things uh, has to be solved by seeing why it is happening. So we have to necessarily look into it, what is the actual problem. And uh, that is where uh, we are going to discuss now about the actual program. There is challenges in diagnosis and treatment of otitis in small animals. So here, 
one most important thing is culture and antibiotic sensitivity test is not a solution for clearing the problem that we have to understand because all the time we will be remembering we will be thinking that uh, this is a very important step uh, to solve the problem but it is not so why why it is not so so we will see one by one so here the diagnostic steps we have to see one by one see what are all the ways by which we can clear the issue so one is history second one is physical examination then thorough ear examination and in that what we are doing cytology otoscopic examination then if it requires we have to go in for imaging technology like radiography ct scan and mri so these things has to be followed one by one so history <clears throat> in the history there should be a detailed complete history see we have to necessarily ask uh, where the problem started how it started and uh, uh, how long it is there and uh, what is the pr prior history of uh, treatment all these things we have to check apart from that we have to check about the pyotraumatic uh, conditions say uh, the owner will be keep on telling it is all the time licking the paw rubbing the face shaking the head or <clears throat> even scratching the head so that is the thing so you have to necessarily uh, check this pyotraumatic so the pyotraumatic means self mutilation this self mutilation can occur because of the uh, scratching of the uh, area that is base of the ear you can see and head tilt that is also a common feature you can expect Uh, from a owner about his dog the head tilt is there uh, the for some time like that he will tell sometime very rarely you can uh, uh, appreciate uh, circling uh, as a important history then head shaking is a common history in this uh, field so physical examination is so important so whenever uh, you after finishing the history so from uh, history you will be asking about the uh, various uh, futures Uh, what is the uh, when uh, when it started and the year got involved whether it is painful or it has got any uh, severe uh, trauma or post discharge or anything one of them sir will tell then apart from that uh, when it comes to you you have to go for physical examination here it requires a complete physical examination of the animal so when the complete physical examination is carried out we have to uh, include uh, very specifically the dermatological examination so the dermatological examination means we have to think about the parasites and allergy and autoimmune disorders see parasites you can see very well about the distribution of the parasites uh, say for example if it is going to be a, a scabies you can see the ear margin uh, and also if it is going to be a demodox facial lesions like that whenever you have a, a issue with the allergy there will be always a recurrence recurrence of the symptoms in spite of giving treatment for so many years or so many months the animal is keep on recurring the pyoderma that is the owner's complaint and also whenever uh, there is a scratching see the never uh, animal will have a, a allergic disease without pruritus so you have to remember that so you have to always think of recurrence and pruritus whether it is going to be there then you have to think of this allergic dermatitis so we have to see the distribution say when uh, whether it has got a, a ear pin involvement or other four limb involvement see we have to think of all the physical examination related to the allergic disease and find out whether it has related to any in the history itself we have to ask about the uh, chemical contacts any uh, ear medicine has been used uh, uh, ear medicine has been used for that Uh, so that has to be uh, see whether it has created allergy to the animal because uh, initially it may not produce allergy it will become all right without our knowledge owner will be keep on applying the ear drops for many months and it will create allergy type 4 sensitivity initially it will have a, a immediate reaction will not be there in those animals uh, so maybe it will be having a delayed uh, hypersensitivity reaction when the owner is going to use continuously since it was responding earlier he will be uh, tempted to use uh, continuously so those uh, allergic uh, dermatitis also can be appreciated by the history so these things has to be uh, have it in mind and then go uh, go thorough clinical examination physical examination 
particularly the dermatological examination, of course, uh, other parts of the body and the palpation also has to be done. Any other internal involvement is going to be there. All those things you have to check. Then along with that, you have to necessarily check the neurological examination. Apart from the dermatological examination, in the investigation of otitis, it is very, very important to go for detailed neurological examination because we have to concentrate more on uh, two important nerves, particularly the facial nerve, that is the cranial nerve seven and uh, cranial nerve eight, that is the cochlear nerve. So these two can uh, get involved because uh, we can very well say whether it has got otitis media or otitis interna. If it is going to be a cranial nerve seven, that is the facial nerve, like uh, whenever you are going to see a case uh, with the uh, ear drooping or uh, eye drooping, or uh, any uh, nictitating member, third eyelid prolapse, or anisocoria, that is one eye uh, constricted, one people constricted, another people dilated, that is anisocoria. And also you can see the other uh, drooping of the lips and other thing, that is a Horner syndrome we can expect to have uh, in certain otitis media cases. So we have to necessarily check uh, the facial examination is so important. So we have to necessarily check uh, if you are going to have any deviation from the normal in the face, then you have to think about the otitis media. So you have to necessarily uh, think of uh, facial nerve uh, in mind whenever you are going to do the neurological examination, particularly in otitis cases. Then if it is going to have a, a say eighth cranial nerve uh, involvement, uh, it can go for circling. So the circling, even the uh, circling and deafness are related to the uh, cochlear nerve damage. So we have to necessarily uh, check whether interna is related to that. So these things will be very well screened in the physical examination itself. So it is very, very important to necessarily check whether the animal is having a facial paralysis, nystagmus, or even ataxia, head tilt. Sometimes it will be having a, 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 the rolling. Uh, rolling or falling off one side like that, it can have a nystagmus, all these things, peripheral vestibular syndrome. Those things and uh, has to be identified with the physical examination. So it may be prominent in the history because one may not uh, think of uh, this otitis. He will project uh, that as a prominent history. So we have to keep all these things in mind before going for thorough examination. So detailed history is so important uh, age of onset of ear problem, shaking of the head or scratching of the ear, seasonal or year round scratching because we have to necessarily check with the uh, atopy, see whether it is seasonal. If it is going to be a seasonal, we can think of pollens. If it is going to be year round, we can think of dust mites. And shaking the head and scratching is also commonly seen in food. So related to food, any symptoms are there, you can see whether because most of the cases will have a ear pinna, erythema, and also occasional vomition, occasional diarrhea, and uh, like that tenesmus, all those things, sometimes they will be having uh, similar symptoms of atopy. Uh, so we have to check that. So age of onset, if it is going to be an atopy, we can very well say it is a, a first age of onset will be less than three, um, three years. So that is most commonly seen. So concurrent problem also we have to find out any other concurrent problem which is related to the disease. Because for example, in case of cat, you can expect to have a viral disease. In cat, it is not the allergy disease very important to create otitis. Whereas a uh, lot of uh, other issues also can create like viral disease, upper respiratory tract diseases, particularly the viral disease like calcivirus, which is going to create pharyngitis, erythema, hyperplasia in the pharynx. You can very well see because always it is a chronic issue. So it can easily affect the eustachian tube and it can go ascending infection. It can uh, pick up the infection to the uh, ear uh, structures. So that is a very important issue. So we had to necessarily see, in, even in one case, it was found that uh, some congenital defect, uh, even the palate deformity can create a problem that, that they have identified. So we have to necessarily see the concurrent problem along with the other issues. So itching anywhere else, that also we have to identify apart from the ear, anywhere else to rule out other allergic causes. That is very, very important. Then response to see sometimes even if any maggot is going to be there inside, you can expect to have a foul smell. The owner will be always uh, telling about the smell from the animal or the pain. Whenever we touch this, the area, it is having pain. 
see most of the maggot cases when it is in the early stage the owner may not uh, identify the maggots only veterinarian will identify that so the, you will be appreciating the typical smell in the physical examination we can very well appreciate the putrid odor or fruity odor uh, so that we can identify apart from the odor what you are getting in the pus discharge you will be having a different uh, foul smelling whereas in case of uh, malassezia you will be having a uh, uh, different smell see the malassezia you will be having a uh, very uh, different smell so that uh, you can very well have it and uh, so the difference in the smell you can very well appreciate it and uh, we can very well go for identifying the problem that uh, so in that way uh, the history will help even the clinical examination you can very well because we have to use your eyes and nose and uh, hand everything to understand what is going on in the animal that is very very important so in that way we have to recognize these uh, important deviations during the physical examination so the response to previous or current therapies uh, that also will help an idea about the disease because owner will be telling after giving this treatment only it developed this kind of problem like that say drug allergy or as i told you contact allergy those things can create problem in the ear so that we have to understand and identify the problem so ear evaluation is so important in physical examination uh, the examination of the pinna and ear canal so we have to evaluate uh, ear exudates see the exudate exudate the how it is whether it is having a blackish discharge more ceruminous secretion or it is having more uh, pus discharge or it has got a bloody discharge with a very uh, fetid liquid like a maggot uh, in maggots you will be seeing like that you have to necessarily check uh, or any other normal watery discharge these things has to be checked and um, whenever you are going to examine the uh, pinna or uh, canal we have to palpate we have to palpate because in chronic uh, otitis you can very well appreciate the calcification the calcification can be hardened areas of the tubular structure uh, the vertical and horizontal areas you can very well appreciate the vertical area of the canal by palpation externally so open mouth so if you are going to open the mouth what will happen if it is going to have a pain immediately you can understand it is going on some acute uh, illness or severe inflammation is going to be there or it is going to affect the lymph nodes in other area other surrounding structures so one another important thing in history is uh, we have to see the patient data see the congen congenital sensory sensory neural deafness is so commonly seen in white cat and the blue eyed animal particularly the cat with the particularly in persian cats of course we are seeing in other breeds of cats also like maine coon maine coon uh, but uh, they will be having all the white coat cats are uh, tend to have this congenital sensor sensory neural deafness the congenital congenital sensory neural deafness is so commonly seen in odd eye uh, blue colored or uh, both eye blue colored animals they have been documented but in both i do uh, blue color animal with white coat particularly in persians they have been uh, documented more more than 50% of the cases they have been documented whereas in odd eyes blue color uh, they uh, this particular problem of congenital defect is what uh, is deafness deafness is documented either partially or completely in odd eye also in 18% of the cases there is being Uh, uh documented by research findings then physical examination of the ear so hearing evaluation is so important see whether the animal first and foremost thing before going for any examination of the ear we have to see whether animal is able to hear or not that is very very important see even in my own practice in the early days when i were uh, started my uh, canine practice uh, one of my client called me and told what what sir uh, Um, uh, now today we have identified our dog is uh, deaf because at that time it was a diwali uh, he was telling uh, how you came to know your dog is deaf i asked uh, then she was telling uh, the when we put the thousand wala the animal we all came inside the house rushed inside the house and we were searching the dog it was not there it was near it near to that thousand wala and simply at the back of the thousand wala the uh, uh, animal is standing and uh, then only we came to know that animal not animal is not in a position to hear any noise then we created lot of noises inside the house after bringing and we came to know that it is uh, having a uh, deafness and uh, you know, we have been uh, coming for many years uh, 
uh, to more than two years. Um, but uh, uh, you didn't tell that uh, the animal is having deafness. They asked. I told uh, you never asked, so I didn't tell. Uh, like that, jovially I told. But actually, uh, I myself also uh, don't know because it is very important for any veterinarian whenever any pup is going to come or whenever any uh, new case is going to come. We have to. It is our duty to identify the. Uh, physical exam through physical examination whether the vision is proper hearing is proper all these things has to be checked that is very very important of course it is in the regular practice apart from that in otitis cases it is very very important to have it as a hearing evaluation as a very important first step so that we have to remember so there itself we can rule out whether it has got any uh, congenital defect whether it has got any uh, chronic problem whether we can go for surgery whether we can go for total ablation all these things will be uh, we can guess so that is very important uh, approach we have to see then ear pinna and surrounding structures how to how they are looking like that also we have to check then otoscopic examination after physically you are seeing everything all the structures of the ear and other uh, area we can very well go for otoscopic examination either handheld otoscope or in the advanced uh, um, fiber optic uh, endoscope we can use uh, because a video otoscope uh, which will be very much useful will give more clarity and clarity and we can very well do manipulation also uh, like that uh, otoscopic examination also very much useful physical examination of the ear then tympanic membrane assessment that is also very important because tympanic membrane will be very intact in all uh, 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 in all the normal cases apart from the normal cases arthritis media cases also uh, ma uh, majority of the cases more than 70% of the cases uh, will not have rupture of the eardrum only if, uh, 20 to 30% of the cases will have rupture of the eardrum but you can very well assess by otoscopy whether any bulge is there in the tympanic membrane any uh, abnormality uh, any protrusion or any concavity of the uh, tympanic membrane is there uh, so the accumulation or the color or the occlusion of uh, ear fluid the pus in the uh, bullae can be recognized by seeing the uh, uh, structure of the tympanic membrane that will give an idea so that is very very important to assess that that is also very important so as i told you first and foremost thing is find uh, find out whether the, your pet is, uh, when the presented pet is able to hear properly or not. That is very, very important. So here the hearing loss seems to be permanent and non-reversible. If you are going to identify that, we can very well say the total ear canal ablation and bullae osteotomy is the only solution. You can very well say to the owner. And if the hearing loss were not an issue, then we can think of medical therapy. So there itself, we are uh, shorting it out. So if it is going to be a permanent damage or irreversible, uh, non-reversible damage, we can very well say, we can very well opt whether it is a congenital, we can tell accordingly, or if it is going to be a severe otitis interna or media, we can very well say it is uh, uh, better to go ahead with the total ear canal ablation or bulla osteotomy. And if it is going to be a hearing loss where not an uh, issue, then we can go for medical therapy. And as I started this media before uh, ear flushing and uh, administration of topical medication, because we have to necessarily choose certain medicines which are very much useful for arthritis media. So that, uh, that requires certain very important identification of the uh, problem. So uh, we have to necessarily check whether arthritis media is there or not. Uh, we have to guess. And uh, by doing cytology, it will help a lot. And uh, owners are uh, not aware of their pets are deaf. So that is also a very important thing. So only after your uh, information, owner will be understanding that their pet is deaf. So that is also very important, particularly in the arthritis cases. So not just to see the dog respond to the sound, but you have to understand, the pet should understand where the sound comes from. That is also very important. Then owner should warn about the deafness as a side effect when, when they are going to do the uh, deep cleaning of the ear in the house itself. Some people even, they will use the cotton very deeply and they will do all the thing, they may damage the ear and sometimes it will uh, uh, disturb the tympanic membrane. So that also you have to 
tell the owner before procedure or any treatment we have to inform the owner about the deafness otherwise the owner will blame us so because of the treatment or the procedure only animals started having deafness like that they will so you have to necessarily evaluate these things before doing any procedure or treatment particularly in otitis media cases so to understand better uh, if we have the facility mostly institutions will have this brain stem auditory evoked response test bear test so that will be more accurate in confirming the deafness so the ear examination first we have to go for observation and palpation wherein you can go for amount and type of x ray extent of orthotic inflammation identify the hyperplasia mosses foreign bodies all these things you can very well identify with the handheld otoscope itself or even with the fiber optic otoscope so wherein we can appreciate see, even in our own clinic we have identified some uh, stapler uh, that is the pin uh, jump clip and uh, some other uh, uh, this thing you know rubber band or even the plant material inside even the cotton balls the small children in the house they may play with the dog and put those things inside the air so we have to necessarily check uh, initially it may shake and it may go deep inside so we have to necessarily check all the foreign bodies also in mind while doing the examination determine the status of the tympanic membrane medical management or surgery the for that also the ear examination is very much useful and regular handheld otoscope should have a strong light and power source so as i told you fiber optic video endoscope uh, will definitely improve the diagnosis and therapy so we have to necessarily understand uh, whether it is unilateral or bilateral also in uh, unilateral most of the foreign bodies will be having the unilateral involvement and the polyps also have will be having the unilateral involvement neoplasia also will have the unilateral involvement but of course the infections will have both bilateral uh, and unilateral uh, presentation so in bilateral we can very well think about parasites allergies and autoimmune disorders uh, particularly in case of atopy you will be having both the ears will get affected maybe intensity or severity may vary so the differences between the dog and cat we have to uh, think about it hearing range itself will vary from uh, uh, even from human to dog and cat and hearing range in dog and cat also vary uh, here it is uh, 67 hertz uh, to 45 hertz whereas uh, uh, in case of cat it is 45 to 64 hertz and uh, 18 muscles are involved in dog and 32 muscles are involved in cat and uh, in dog more prone to ear diseases whereas in cat it is not so much uh, of course they also have it but not like uh, to the extent of dog uh, in uh, cat they have the capacity to rotate their ear independently in 180 degrees they can turn in direction of sounds 10 times faster than the dog then we have to necessarily check uh, bacterial and yeast in otitis externa as you are seeing in allergic dermatitis in the early stage what is happening the secondary involvement as i told you in all the lectures uh the always the, the primary cause uh, will be uh, forgetting and will be going for treating only the bacteria and yeast will be considering only malassezia or the pyoderma so they are all the secondary factors which are involved in uh, you can very well see in the otitis section as the redness or smell uh, uh, musty odor if it is going to be yeast you can very well appreciate in the early stage of otitis section and if we are going to have otitis media you can very well appreciate the bacterial extrudes from the chronic otitis externa pooling into the horizontal ear canal cause uh, erosion of the ear drum leading to secondary otitis media or interna so that is very common the fluid will get accumulate in this area and you can affect it can affect the extension of infection can go in, into the uh, other parts of the interna also possible and then uh, the surrounding structures how it is affected the neoplasia or trauma severe otitis externa extension of the infection or surrounding tissues also get affected so in the history itself we can even identify the deafness uh, whenever animal is going to have otitis or not if it is not having otitis we have to consider about the trauma also the trauma uh, severe hit that also can affect the now eighth cranial nerve and also it can create deafness so we have to rule out all these things whenever you are going to examine the animal then we have to necessarily go for ear pin and surrounding skin examination where we have to check uh, whether it has got uh, erect ears animals 
sometime may not have erection they will be having a, a folding because of the pain so that itself a clear indication particularly in german shepherds we can very well see even in case of uh, uh, this thing you know in uh, labrador or any dog which is having even the hematoma not necessarily it should have a hematoma even if it is going to have a severe issue uh, severe infection they can droop the ear so the no longer erect ears can be very much appreciated and understand uh, by uh, ear pain and palpation it is very important to see the ear base and bony changes uh, the chronicity can be appreciated and oral hematoma has to be uh, appreciated which is very much uh, painful and it can be uh, readily appreciated uh, the animal is having a severe otitis so that we have to understand the only thing is we are not understanding the uh, primary cause that is why it is having a recurrent hematoma also so the uh, the dr uh, sandra coach see uh, uh given a good uh, narration in pathogenesis uh, like this so the primary causes uh, we have got a list of causes like parasitic cause or uh, uh, allergic cause or even the autoimmune cause or even other uh, type of uh, primary disorders can lead to uh, otitis extrada early stages they can go for uh, uh, they they will be augmented by the predisposing factors like confirmation of the ears or swimmers or it may be having a Uh, like a cocker spaniel or a german shepherd uh, they will be having a predispositioning factors because in cocker spaniels or even in case of uh, shih tzu they used to have uh, because of uh, various reasons in shih tzu uh, they tend to have more uh, more hairs hair growth inside the ear in cocker spaniel they will be having a, a multiple hair uh, instead of a single hair they will be having a multiple hair uh, growth in the ear canal and also the ear canal is so long in certain breeds like basset hound so these are all the predisposing factors that can produce uh, they may augment the primary causes and more going for secondary causes like uh, bacteria and yeast will get involved in that then they will go for uh, chronicity with the precipitating precipitating causes there is precipitating causes the chronic pathological changes will get like hyperplasia and uh, stenosis or uh, stricture all these things will happen so that is very very important thing uh, in uh, uh, in the prognosis and uh, if we can tell the prognosis by assessing those things the primary causes coming to primary causes uh, there is nothing but uh, initiate the inflammatory process within the ear canal so within the ear canal itself this inflammatory process is creating because of this uh, alter, uh, alter the oral environment allowing the secondary complication factor to develop actual inciting agents that causes uh, disease in the normal ear when the animal is going to have a normal ear these agents these primary causes are the solely responsible for creating the bad environment and creating otitis externa initially then they will go for otitis media or interna uh, say for examples we can go for parasite first in the parasite in cat you can expect to have a notoderic mange as a very important thing and also the uh, the autodactic mange autodactic cynotis in this particular the cat we got uh, both together that's why i put this picture so we can very well have even autitis uh, um, uh, because of this sarcoptis or even autodactic mange in both dog and cat so the cat uh, very commonly persian cats are used to have this autodactic cynotis even in our study uh, my student uh, one dr arjun has done pgst with the uh, uh, cat uh, dermatology he has done work on that uh, he came to we have uh, come to a conclusion that uh, persian cats are more prone when compared to the uh, shatar cats uh, so they are very much affected with the ear mite infestation uh, so that is the thing even in our clinic we might have felt a lot of uh, things uh, with the persians and uh, we can very well see in young pups used to have a lot of scabies uh, thick scales and erythema and pinnal margins uh, that uh, give an appearance of uh, sarcoptis and uh, whenever you are going to do the scraping or ear swab examination we can very well go for identifying the sarcoptis that can be uh, uh, very well uh, uh, tackled with uh, permite plus uh, the the uh, the softos plus shampoos Uh, like uh, which is having a permite uh, permethrin uh, as a very important indicator uh, important ingredient so we have to necessarily check uh, the demodox 
also in the very important parasite which is having a ear involvement uh, because they tend to have erythema crust and the scales uh, in the ear also apart from the face so demodicosis even in dermatophytosis in cat uh, they tend to have this type of lesions uh, in case of demodicosis it is uh, of course uh, the iso isoxy uh, uh, like a fluoralanar isoxazole in derivatives which are available in the market like a fluoralanar and a, a afoxalanar are very much useful and apart from that uh, very uh, uh, useful thing is uh, ivermectin are very much useful this ivermectin you can very well use the neomac at the dose rate of 400 microgram per kg body weight uh, till you have two consecutive skin scraping negative we can very well go for treating the cases with the neomac particularly the dimodex so uh, in the dermato uh, dermatophytes particularly the uh, microsporum canis we can very well understand by seeing the wood lamp examination uh, with the apple green fluorescence and uh, we can see inside the ear also and you can go for culture also and the clinical presentation the remission of these signs uh, clinical signs and also the wood lamp examination and culture negative should be there after the treatment so the treatment can be very well do with the uh, itraconazole 5 mg per kg body weight or the um, uh, terpenafen uh, that has to be necessarily go for uh, 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 six weeks uh, dietary uh, the drug uh, uh, therapy uh, terpenafen at the dose rate of 40 mg per kg in cat is very ideal for complete clearing of the problem so the puppy strong ail is one another uh, immune mediated disease we have discussed uh, already so this puppy strangle is uh, nothing but when the dog is presented for vaccine after giving vaccine the immune thing is disturbed in majority of the cases even sometime there is no correlation of the vaccine also possible this particular puppy strangle is commonly seen in puppy there is a, a cellulitis they call as a puppy cellulitis in that also you will be having lot of uh, pus discharge and uh, enlargement of the lymph nodes and otitis see the severe uh, discharge around the eyes i mean around the eyes ears and also the base of the ears you can very well see the thing here the main treatment is uh, prednisolone at the dose rate of 2 mg per kg body weight uh, initially then you have to taper and uh, if it is not going to be helpful then you can or if it is going to be continued we can very well go for cyclosporin 5 mg per kg body weight and this is the typical appearance of the puppy strangle in the presented case Uh, so this uh, particular uh, thing will have an enlargement of the lymph node mandibular parotid lymph node also and uh, this particular uh, ear uh, has to be cleaned and maintained because sometime when you are going to take a swab and see the cytology there won't be any cocci there won't be any bacteria in it there will be full of neutrophils only so that indicates in any autoimmune disorder you will be seeing lot of uh, neutrophils which are not degenerative see generally uh, in case of any pyoderma you will be having lot of uh, skin pyoderma so you will be having a degenerative neutrophils whereas here you will be having a non degenerative neutrophils and also there won't be any most of the time it don't have any secondary bacterial infection so you won't be seeing any cocci or anything then comes for uh, this uh, allergic causes wherein you can very well see the ear pinna erythema recurrent pyoderma very commonly you are seeing in food allergy and atopic cases these cases can be very well appreciated uh, improvement by applying the uh, tac for pet that is tacrolimus spray uh, apart from using other uh, immunosuppressants like hydrocortisone acyponate or hydrocortisone application because uh, hydrocortisone uh, acyponate may not have the problem or memantasone may not have the problem because they are going to denature after entering into the epidermis to dermis whereas uh, and uh, particularly the uh, tacrolimus will not have any other uh, uh, side effect uh, as you are having side effect of atrophy of cells in case of uh, hydrocortisone acyponate whereas here it don't be having any number of days you can use this particular tacrolimus that you can use as a spray which is very easy to apply or you can apply over the cotton and uh, apply over the animal uh, if it is if the animal is uh, allowing we can very well do that that is the best method because it is having a better penetration inside and uh, as we are all know that recurrent hematoma apart from the recurrent pyoderma recurrent hematoma also possible in case of uh, uh, food allergy or any arthritis uh, because of the 
atopy also you can expect to have a recurrent uh, uh, hematoma so we have to appreciate the cause particularly the allergic uh, either it is due to atopy or food allergy that we have to identify and clear the thing by uh, dietary trial or going for uh, multimodal approach for treating the atopy cases and then vasculitis is also one another important thing in these allergic cases we have to necessarily check the res uh, which uh, this uh, vasculitis is a result of ulceration of necrosis notching and uh, scarring of the pinnal margin as you are seeing in this picture so we have to necessarily use this three times of uh, tacrofet application is solving the problem that is uh, very much useful uh, clinically and in case of atopy also if it is going to be a focal this tacrofet will be very much useful and uh, in general generalized atopy we have to necessarily go in for cyclosporine or oclocetinib all those things has to be followed apart from other supportives so here the in atopy or any allergic cases the severity of the ear involvement will vary from mild like a very simple uh, scaling formation or mild erythema to uh, severe erythema like this even more than severe like this it can be happening like this so it has to be very much understood that the severity of the lesion by seeing like this then we have to identify the chemical contact allergy also particularly the drugs like uh, uh, neomycin based uh, drugs will definitely create problems in dogs whenever they are going to use for a long time they develop delayed hypersensitivity reaction and you can see the difference of uh, uh, see in the previous thing you can see the erythema like this whereas here intense redness is there we can very well appreciate this and the owner will be keep on doing without our knowledge so we have to necessarily ask in the history itself any medication is being used uh, for ear and you have to necessarily array, see whether both ears are affected or one ear is affected sometime he will be using both ears so we have to necessarily check uh, majority of the time it will be involved in one ear because the owner might have got problem in one ear like that in food allergy the lot of cases we have seen the almost 50% of the cases we have seen with otitis pruritis with otitis externa that is only the erythema of the ear pinna uh, along with the recurrent pyoderma facial rubbing and licking of the paw whereas uh, without these symptoms only with the redness of the pinna we have seen 16% of the cases along with the pruritis so the pruritis is very important in any allergic diseases and the ear pinna involvement also important uh, in all the allergic diseases in atopic cases uh, in a uh, uh, veterinary uh, world congress they have presented that atopic otitis is uh, commonly affected with the atopy the atopy is having 73% and uh, involvement of the ear in flea allergy is 5.9% uh, most commonly we are not seeing any uh, uh, involvement of the ear in the flea allergy in our area so far we have not come across uh, most of the cases we have seen Uh, without any uh, complication in the ear whereas uh, food allergy and atopy is very predominant in our area and normal dogs will not have any ear involvement so here in our uh, study uh, one of my student uh, we have done the work uh, dr uh, uh, bala guru has done the work in mvac in atopy myself and uh, himself we have done a study in that uh, in that we have identified that uh, 91% 6 uh, 91 0.67% of the cases uh, had the concave ear pinna erythema that is otitis externa that is in the early stage whereas in the 47% nearly 47.2 that means 50% of the cases were having severe otitis interna and media so the otitis externa and interna together that has been documented in this uh, study Uh, so it is very very important to understand that uh, hypersensitivity reaction will create lot of problem in the ear not only in dog but also in cat but the uh, number of incidences is less that's all as uh, you are seeing in cat also atopic dermatitis food allergy and contact allergy also common in cat uh, also noticed in cat not to the extent of dog so apart from the allergic dermatitis it is also possible to see in all the autoimmune diseases like uh, pembigus what you are seeing here pictures are pembigus in, in our practice so in our clinic we have seen this uh, pembigus in the face facial appreciation of the lesions and also the around the ear and all the area you can expect to have 
pembigus uh, appreciation even in case of cat you can expect to have the lesions in this so that is pustules on the on the ear pinna is so common because if you are going to take a swab um from the pustules where the scabs has to be removed and take out the pus as a swab and see under microscope you can see the acantholytic cells so the pyoderma and uh, pustules crust all these things will be is a presentation in pembigus that you can remember and understand apart from that we have got one another important uh, thing what we commonly miss this this is uh, what you can understand this is the typical lesions in cat uh, we very commonly we are seeing that is nothing but uh, mosquito bite allergy the mosquito bite hypersensitivity it also can be appreciated with the hemorrhagic spot in the tip of the ear hemorrhagic crusting in the tip of the ear in the erected ear breeds particularly in german shepherds or in case of uh, other uh, erected ear uh, dogs you can very well see of uh, the pinnal folding in the pendulous ears of the dogs also you can very well see so because the flies tend to be there in that area uh, very commonly you are seeing in dogs as a hemorrhagic crust of the ear but in this case very mildly you are seeing the hemorrhagic uh, spot in cat also but uh, very commonly we are seeing in the nose nasal bridge as a mosquito bite hypersensitivity so here also you have to treat with the steroid so that is very very important even the tacrolimus application uh, will help a lot to improve the condition then apart from that idiopathic uh, primary seborrhea so the primary keratinization disorder particularly in uh, cocker spaniel you might have come across a lot of uh, uh, dogs presented from the birth it is uh, keep on having the thing whatever uh, anti seborrheic shampoos we are using it is not improving or recurring like that the owner will be complaining that in that case also you can see the severe ear involvement because of the chronicity animal will have severe otitis and apart from that uh, like uh, in cases like sebaceous adenitis the adherent uh, uh, scales with the uh, skin that is very typical particularly the yellow or white uh, scales which are tightly adherent to the root of the hair there is very common tuft of uh, scales which are tightly adherent to the root of the hair is the typical symptom of uh, and the posterior alopecia you can very well see bilaterally you can see the loss of hair and uh, if you are going to spread the hair and see all over the area you can see the tight uh, tightly adherent scale we can very well appreciate the follicular clusters whenever you are going to pluck the hair and see under microscope uh, you can very well see the trichogram very clearly indicates the uh, cornifying defects uh, which is induced by the sebaceous adenitis that we can very well appreciate that is also a primary cause for getting this and uh, there are reports stating that uh, the soft palate abnormality is also uh, creating otitis media in uh, cats uh, that has been documented by uh, wood wood bridge uh, author and uh, wax plug and ceremonial is also possible to accumulate inside and a lot of glandular disorders also possible to have this otitis externa or otitis media so this ceremonial ear disease can starting from the mild form to severe even the neoplasms like even uh, uh, sometimes ceremono uh, ceremonoma or even the ceremono carcinoma which can be uh, uh, benign or malignant uh, can occur in the dog because of the we have got two glands one is superficial sebaceous gland underlying is a ceremonous gland which is going to give secretion these are getting uh, obstructed uh, by because of more secretions uh, because they are uh, going to produce lot of uh, discharge because of uh, more uh, common more blood supply in this area uh, because of the disease generalized disease like allergy so in case of any allergic disease like atopy food allergy if it is going to be a chronic case uh, because the ear is being involved the more uh, blood supply is going to be there because of more blood supply uh, they uh, sensitized by these glands they produce more uh, uh, more uh, more secretion because of that the gland is getting hypertrophied uh, uh, they will get enlarged and engorged so because of that appearance will be like this and uh, in the later stage it will look like this and that itself will create a problem so the many diseases causes increased blood supply and create this problem and even we can see the ruptured tympanic membrane like this and uh, inflammatory otitis can be produced uh, because of the ruptured because uh, interna can create ruptured ruptured uh, uh, tympanic membrane 
and sometimes the external extra uh, external ear canal with the nodules also can create problem of the uh, internal or external and a non neoplastic growth like uh, nodules and polyps are so common and uh, that also we have to understand because of that also recurrent otitis may be there in our practice so it is very very important to recognize there is a recent report says that it has got uh, they have a technique of tra traction and avulsion within 5 minutes or within a period of 15 minutes they can remove all the polyps uh, with this uh, minor surgery not a minor we had to go in for a uh, uh, sedation or anesthesia to remove that if it is going to be spread uh, deeply we have to go for general anesthesia definitely we have to go for general anesthesia and after that we have to apply uh, fix the traction uh, with the pgf2 and we can uh, put the pressure over the uh, thing uh, the forceps and uh, we can clamp uh, clamp the uh, polyp with the forceps and uh, twist it and uh, tracks it the traction and aversion is the technique by which they have removed and uh, that can be easily done uh, that is what the thing says and if it is going to be uh, with the horizontal ear canal uh, that has to be opened uh, the skin has to be skin has to be opened and see the thing and we have to remove like that uh, they are given we can go through that in the literature and uh, otic tumors uh, that is also very commonly reported we have also documented certain uh, cases many pineal tumor exists including the seruminous gland adenoma which is so common in case of cats squamous cell carcinoma which is so commonly documented so in complete stenosis is also possible if it is going to be a chronic case and uh, seruminous uh, glandular uh, adenocarcinoma also possible uh, that also we have to remember so in case of cat uh, the seruminous gland adenocarcinoma squamous cell carcinoma carcinoma of unknown origins are so commonly uh, documented and we also has to consider about the primary otitis media in certain uh, breeds particularly in case of uh, brachycephalics in brachycephalis so particularly in king charles spaniel so these are all the breeds which are very much affected so in that uh, very commonly this is a predisposing this is a primary cause for getting the primary otitis in our media in case of uh, uh, animal so there is also possibility to have a idiopathic otitis in a as a primary cause and whenever you have the problem of chronic otitis you can very well see the messy appearance of the ears like this wherein we have to go for uh, cytology as a very important tool when the when you go for a cytology particularly not the externa we have to go deep and see the interna see the interna we have to go deep uh, after the horizontal ear if you are going to take a sample of uh, Uh, cytology and uh, go for seeing under the microscope after staining with the uh, dipick or uh, uh, this thing field a field b stain we can very well appreciate the uh, thing uh, cocci or rods this cocci means we have to necessarily go for cephapodoxim as the first uh, choice you can see the cephalosporin uh, cephapodoxim or cephalexin or uh, we can very well go for uh, uh, glindamycin but uh, with the glindamycin and the cephalexin we have to go for the cephalexin we have to go 30 mg per kg bid and uh, with the case of uh, uh, glindamycin we have to go for 10 mg per kg bid whereas if it is going to be a cephapodoxim as you are seeing in cephet uh, it is enough to go for 10 mg because uh, any chronic otitis require a higher dose it has to penetrate the bone it has to reach the area so we have to give a higher dose and the longer intervals longer duration we have to give not the interval longer duration we have to give so that has to be given uh, even for a month or two we have to give uh, till you get clear all these thing so that is very very important if it is going to be a rod we have to necessarily go for thinking of uh, endrofloxin or morbifloxin so here the pseudomonad otitis will be giving a rod like appearance in the thing you can very well see uh, the advantage of morbifloxin over uh, even morbomet in case of uh, intus they have the morbomet tablets available it is used in 5 mg per kg body weight which is having an advantage of uh, uh, over the uh, this thing uh, endrofloxin uh, in cat particularly because when you are going to exceed 5 mg per kg body weight it will affect the retinal damage because in otitis externa you have to give longer period 
whenever you are going to exceed 5 mg per kg of endofloxin for a longer period particularly in the cases like our pseudo monosaccharides you will have to necessarily end up with a uh, autotoxicity or a retinal damage sorry retinal damage so the retinal damage and uh, uh, when you have a problem with the ear you will be having uh, will be leading to problem with the eyes also so that can be avoided by using this uh, marbofloxin so that is by uh, marbomet so apart from that uh, we have to necessarily go for uh, using the uh, otoscope for a clear cleaning of the ear uh, nowadays we have got lot of uh, 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 without cable we can very well do in clinic uh, we can easily do these uh, otoscopes are available large number of otoscope with various designs are available even fiber optic are uh, are available with a very much clarity with the video otoscope Uh, depending upon the budget you can even do with the handheld we can very much easily understand and appreciate the thing so here we a uh, very important application is uh, we can very well after clearing thorough cleaning of the deep cleaning of the ear it is also important to have a, a meringeotomy uh, the meringeotomy is meringeotomy is a very important procedure wherein we are going to puncture at 5 o'clock portion of the uh, tympanic membrane 5 o'clock portion so that we won't uh, affect the other structures of the ear so wherein we can uh, take out the fluid and uh, aspirate the fluid so that uh, ear will get clear and we can go for culture 0.5 ml if it is not possible we can even instill uh, some uh, 0.5 ml of uh, saline inside and aspirate it and go for culture and antibiotic sensitivity test based on which we can go for uh, uh, treating cases in refractory cases of uh, management with the medical therapy uh, we have to go for meringeotomy uh, so that uh, we can very well go for identifying uh, uh, clearing the drainage as well as uh, clearing the uh, going for culture and so that will it will help in treatment and diagnosis so the tympanic membrane difference between the dog and cat we can very well appreciate a c shaped structure mele in case of tympanic membrane whereas here here you will be having a straight appearance of the mele that is the structure which is seen in the tympanic membrane here it will be c shape it will be straight here so with that we can understand so as i told you foreign bodies also has to be removed and uh, we have to think in, in treating the cases and secondary causes as i told you the bacteria and uh, uh, malassezia are very important secondary factors that has to be cleared and particularly in the chronic cases we have to necessarily check so this uh, bacteria with the pustular Uh, or uh, papular eruptions you can very well appreciate by seeing uh, all over the body or even uh, restricted to the ear you can expect to have otitis and in case of uh, malassezia you can very well see the cases we have to use those shampoos which are having the meconazole which is very much useful in treating cases if it is going to be a chronic case you can even go for oral tablets particularly in case of a dog it is very much useful with a mm, Uh, itraconazole uh, uh, and uh, we can very well go for 5 mg per kg body weight uh, even we can go for meconazole shampoos that is very much useful and ketoconazole also we can use as a shampoo and uh, you can very well see the self mutilation see the area where it has got because of constant scratching you can even if you don't have the facility of having any stain or anything you have mere ink staining any uh, brill ink or any ink if you are going to put a drop over the cover slip uh, drop over the glass slide and put a swab and you can very well see uh, uh, the thing you can very well see under microscope as a, a, a budding uh, malassezia very well you can appreciate these are all the symptoms you can see the ventral neck and the inguinal or ear uh, margin i mean ear pinna all this area will get affected in case of malassezia so the predisposing factors do not cause the external uh, the uh, getting affected with the otitis they won't cause the otitis but they augment the uh, disease so there is the increase the risk of development of the disease and persist uh, go for persistent of otitis externa uh, so what are all the predisposing factors we can see the ear canal conformation in certain breeds as you are seeing in uh, basset hounds and uh, excess moisture in the ear canal increased environmental temperature in appropriate inappropriate management skin disorders hypertrichosis as you are seeing in uh, shih tzu and uh, previous otitis and uh, excessive humidity 
what uh, cysts and maggots and the nasopharyngeal involvement like in cats and in case of adverse drug, drug reaction and in immunosuppressive diseases like in case of uh, cat uh, you are seeing neoplasm or any uh, this thing you know that uh, di even in diabetes mellitus or anything this is going to create even in the uh, hypothyroidism all these things can create problem uh, so we have to necessarily check uh, the predisposing factors like uh, confirmation in these breed blood hound or basset hound or uh, even shih tzu cocker spaniels beagles all these things will have the uh, pendulous though will have a problem of uh, otitis externa not only that uh, they have recorded uh, most of these three breeds uh, cocker spaniels poodles and german shepherd of course they are having erect ears but they are very much prone for this particular thing uh, because of various reasons the, which is not uh, uh, completely understood and uh, even the swimming dogs which are going to have a uh, activity as yes, uh, swimming very commonly they are prone for this uh, particular thing they predispose the disease and hairy pendulous ears and keratinization and defects all these things are predisposing factors and also there are uh, possibility to have atresia ani uh, like what you are having in cough very commonly here we have recorded in a german shepherd dog uh, we have got atresia of the right ear canal opening that is documented by an author uh, and also it is recorded that it is uh, more commonly seen in german shepherds there is um, uh, this congenital deformity of atresia in the ear canal uh, in german shepherd has been documented that also we have to remember uh, by doing a thorough ear examination we can very well see the atresia of the ear canal and respiratory viral diseases as i told you in cat it is so common with this particular uh, blackie cat uh, which has presented to our clinic had a very severe pharyngeal chronic pharyngeal hyperplasia which uh, affected the eustachian tube and it affected the ear uh, uh, features also so they developed otitis so here uh, you can see the very well the respiratory involvement with the different diseases like herpes or calcivirus uh, in all these cases you can very well see the nasal discharge uh, uh, sneezing as a predominant features that we have to necessarily check and uh, perpetuating uh, factors uh, if you are going to tell about that uh, changes which are going to happen physiologically in the ear in response to the otitis externa like hyperplasia stenosis or uh, occlusion uh, those things will end up with the chronicity of the disease see as uh, the factors perpetuate or Uh, moisture, uh, moist nature of the environment, maceration, trauma. See, the some owner will be keep on doing cleaning with the cotton bud uh, without even consulting the doctor. They may produce even the trauma in the ear canal. So we we may not know only by history we will be knowing. And uh, maceration, trauma, over cleaning, uh, topical therapy. They will be keep on doing topical therapy without the need also sometime. so the chronic inflammation will lead to progressive pathology which will lead to recurrent refractory otitis which will lead to otitis media so the proliferation and hyperplasia osseous metaplasia or osseous uh, calcification stenosis all these things will happen and end up like osteomyelitis you know, what you are seeing here osteo uh, interna or osteo media will also require uh, long term therapy and uh, understanding the pathogenesis is so important to manage the disease this uh, factors uh, sustain the aggravate the inflammatory process and prevent the resolution and to go for worsening the existing otitis externa accentuate or permit uh, development of secondary causes prevent the resolution even if the primary and secondary causes are addressed say if you are going to completely correct the secondary uh, secondary causes like malassezia or pyoderma or even the bacterial infection or primary like allergies or uh, anything has to be treated and cleared to some extent then also you may not be in a position because of the chronicity or uh, this because of this uh, perpetuating factors the development anatomical development of hyperplasia and stenosis uh, created the problem so the most common reason for surgical intervention there we uh, require help of a surgeon so wherein you have to necessarily go for surgery so we have to decide like end stage otitis we have to necessarily see the ruptured uh, rupture of tympanum wherein we require more than a month to treat so that uh, it will have uh, complete healing of the 
uh, rupture of the tympanum. So at the end, we can very well see the otitis externa primary causes. Most commonly, we have uh, seen uh, what we have discussed. Uh, we have uh, we have made a study in that uh, we have seen the allergic cases are coming for 80 percent having otitis problem and uh, the parasitic cases uh, we came across 15 percent of the cases with otitis and uh, in other cases like uh, breeds a foreign body tumor or accident or bacteria or maggot or viral diseases they uh, they had five percent uh, in uh, totaling. So that is why we have to necessarily check for this primary cause, but that is the allergy cause in mind while treating otitis. That is what I wanted to stress here. So here, uh, the cytology is so important. So as I told you, cytology, by doing cytology, we can very well go for taking a earbud and taking the thing and see the parasite. And if you want to go for a culture, so even the type of uh, bacteria, whether it is a cockeye or uh, uh, even a rod can be understand by having a straining of uh, 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 simple cytology technique. And if you want to go for culture further, we can go for a sterile uh, culture swab and take uh, and go for seeing the culture thing. And uh, cytology is so important to recognize the inflammation, infection and neoplasia. So the, or the malassezia, all these things, uh, we can very well appreciate bacteria and malassezia or uh, neoplasia. Uh, so that uh, has to even sometimes, uh, the neoplasia cell can be identified, appreciated very clearly. So like this, so the deep air flush will be very much useful to recognize all these things. Sometimes the epithelial cell itself will be recognized uh, in cytological thing. In our uh, clinic, we have identified uh, in a chronic case like this wherein you can expect to have epithelial cells, larger epithelial cells, which is so commonly seen in normal dog, but they may not be having, uh, normal dog may not have the cocci like this. So the cocci with the non-nucleated uh, uh, epithelial cells, in chronic cases, even it can be having a nucleated longer, larger epithelial cells also possible. And uh, apart from that, uh, some uh, ceremonious adenoma can have the cells, rounded cells like this and acantholytic cells also can be appreciated. And in case of uh, cytology, you can see the rods like thing, that is the pseudomonas. Uh, most commonly we are seeing, even though few other cases we can see, see the cocci. Very commonly we are seeing streptococcus. If it is going to be a streptococcus, it will be a chain of uh, uh, cocci you can see. If it is going to be a, a streptococcus, very commonly seen, it will be having a different individual cocci will be seen in different areas. Sometimes we will be seeing together, cocci and malassezia together, and malassezia alone also can be very much appreciated in cytology. So in the culture, it is very much important to see 100% infected cats, particularly culture positive by day 14. So even in case of dog, it is better to go for the wait for 14 days and then see for thing. But periodically you have to check the growth. You should not open, open the disc and you have to see the look for growth uh, using the back uh, background, the lightning, so that you can very well appreciate that, that you have to remember. And uh, we have to go for uh, bacterial culture to uh, assess the seriousness of the specific uh, autoch uh, pathogen and go for uh, seriousness and assessing the treatment. And uh, we have to necessarily uh, understand that it may not be true picture because the concentration of the topical antibiotics may not be the same as in case of serous, uh, serum level as you are seeing the result with the mic uh, uh, in uh, uh, culture. But we can go for oral therapy with that. Uh, but uh, the typical indication is the chronicity of the disease and uh, rots in the cytology. If it is going to be there, we have to necessarily check with the culture and history of multi drug resistance, history of long-term or oral topical antibiotic therapy. And the bacteria, uh, in the, uh, despite of apparently app appropriate therapy, barely is not clearing that is very uh, important indication for uh, this thing, cytology. So whenever you are going to do the cytology, uh, until no inflammatory cells or DNA strands in the cytology, we have to per perform follow-up cytology. So you are going to treat the case after treatment, uh, yeah, once, in, uh, once in two weeks or four weeks, we have to take the cytology and follow up the case till you have a clearance of cells or DNA strands in the cytology then deep air flushing is so important 
uh, wherein we have to go for it is a very important diagnostic tool not only for diagnosis but also for the treatment it is so important short course of topical glucocorticoids will be useful before uh, going for deep flushing because they will control the inflammation and stenosis and you can see very clearly usually it is done under general anesthesia because we can very well go for uh, uh, clear flushing and uh, we can clear all the debris and we can go for uh, uh, even performing the meningiotomy so that we can go for a deep uh, culture also from the internal ear. Uh, so this is the way we are doing in our clinic uh, uh, with a normal saline and uh, ear flushing, ear cleanser, ambiflush is being used here uh, very commonly. Uh, so that also we can use along with the, even we can go for TRIS uh, EDTA, which is very useful for uh, synergistic action is there whenever you are going to use the TRIS EDTA. It is going to help any antimicrobial will have a very augmenting action. There is the synergistic effect because of that, we will be always going for using the stress CDTA along with the chlorhexidine preparation like this. So we can very well go for a normal saline as a first flush. Then we can go for ear cleanser. Uh, then we can go for topical application of a thing because once you are going to clear the area, then we can very well penetrate, allow the medication to penetrate the thing. So thirdly, we have to go for using the uh, ear drops, uh, medicated ear drops like Pomisol. Whenever you are going to do frequently, whenever it is going to be a chronic thing, we have to go for uh, very severe um, uh, cases. You have to go for frequent uh, cleaning of the ear, even the same day, two times like that. Later, you can teach, teach the owner to follow it in the home itself. So that is the thing. See that uh, having an advantage, see this particular case was a chronic case. Then when we did uh, ear cleaning, a deep ear cleaning, we came to know that it had a very uh, a large number of small, tiny growths like sterminous uh, hyperplasia. And uh, we came to know that because of that, it has developed a uh, sterminous adenoma. Because of that, after histopathology, we came to know that it has got a sterminous adenoma. This sterminous adenoma is the reason to have the repeated uh, arthritis. So this, we have to go for radiation therapy that alone will be helpful with the 48 gray. Uh, we have to go for four weeks of therapy that uh, we have to do. Uh, so we have to necessarily check for uh, basic cause that is very important. In uh, chronic cases, sometimes you may not be in a position to clean because uh, it may not be in a position to dilate the ear canal because, uh, because of the stenosis uh, appearance. So where you can use the, under general anesthesia, you can use the 3MM autoscope itself to dilate that and we can very well reach the deeper part and flush the thing and instill the in ear cleanser so that they can very well coat the area. So uh, one another important thing we have to remember is the cats are uh, uh, always uh, reluctant to uh, accept the ear cleaning uh, because they are uh, very controversial in cats. Cats are more sensitive to topicals. So it is better to avoid in most of the cats if they are, because they themselves are very sensitive. Particularly when they are coming into the clinic, it is very important to uh, not to opt this uh, topical thing. So use a few precautions uh, for uh, repetitive ear flush. See, we have to, sometimes we may, uh, the owner may not uh, allow us to go for uh, general anesthesia frequently. So in those cases, we'll be going for only sedation. So in those cases, uh, we are not going to apply the endotracheal tube. So there is possibility for aspiration. So in those cases, it is better to go for keeping the dog in a, a dog head should be in an angle down so that uh, I don't go into the auditory tube so that I don't create any problem of aspiration pneumonia so that we can understand. So when and why diagnostic imaging is being used, Radio radiology, uh, radiography, ultrasound, CT scan, or MRI can be used uh, based on our requirements or uh, availability. And uh, we have to necessarily go for these techniques only when there is a chronic recurrent severe arthritis cases, particularly when it is going to get involved with the neurological signs. Uh, Paraoral swelling or pain uh, when opening the mouth is going to be very severe. If it is not going to get control over the treatment, we have to think of this. Patient with an apparently normal tympanic membrane also can have the otitis media as we discussed. There also we can understand very very much uh, clearly with a CT scan or a radiography by way of open mouth uh, radiograph or we can very well go for taking a CT scan which is going to give a very good idea about the uh, otitis me interna or media. 
incidence of otitis media is more than 50% uh, that is in all the chronic cases uh, recurrence of ear infection for more than 6 months definitely they'll be having a more chance to have a particularly 89% to 90% may have a chronic otitis media so that is the research finding so it is very important to do all these cases with a ct scan uh, we can uh, we can very well understand the difference with the comparing the normals a dog and cat, we can very well understand the difference you can see. And uh, that is the thing. So we have to go for treatment aspect. Next is treatment aspect, wherein we are seeing uh, the application of uh, uh, five goals. Five goals are very important in otitis external treatment or even in otitis treatment, not necessarily external, even it can include otitis media also or internal also. Resolve discomfort and pain is the first step we have to do. Then remove. So by way of applying analgesic or uh, painkillers, we have to use. Then remove debris or discharge. That is very important by way of deep air cleaning. Elimination of infection from the internal uh, or external uh, uh, middle ears uh, by way of uh, deep flushing or meningiotomy. Then uh, reverse uh, chronic uh, pathogenic uh, pathological changes. By way of uh, understanding the culture reports and we have to go for uh, going for steroids to change the pathology, inflammation and other stenosis by uh, intense application of uh, uh, steroid and antibiotics, uh, we can come to a, a level wherein we can go for uh, treating the case and identify and treat the primary cause of uh, otitis. This is a very important area where we miss in many of the situations. We have allergic causes as a main, but we will forget all those things. You'll be simply treating temporarily. Animal will have cure. Owner will be happy. You'll be happy. Again, the problem comes whenever you are going to see the owner. Sir, it was all right in the first stage, the second stage. But again, it is coming back, sir. We have to change the medicine. I think that like that owner will be giving advice to us. So you have to avoid all those things. So we have to necessarily check the very important allergic uh, dermatitis cases. Uh, we have to understand and go for it. And treatment of otitis media by way of flushing the bulla, instill the antimicrobial agent, steroid uh, has to be instilled inside the bulla. And uh, systemic therapy is very important along with the topical therapy. Uh, culture, with the help of culture and antibiotic sensitivity tests, or uh, if it is not possible, at least you have to go for deeper structure culture, cytology. And uh, so short term systemic glucocorticoids for inflammation and pain is very much useful. So non-toxic, uh, non-autotoxic agents, uh, we are having a list uh, like a sterile saline, tris CDTA, even the chlorhexidine and aqueous glucocorticoids, uh, furoquinolones, penicillins, all the cephalosporin groups are penicillins and uh, uh, azole groups or nystatin, uh, they're all non-autotoxic. And topical therapy, uh, here one important thing is just uh, we have to insist the owner to go for uh, enough fluid has to go inside. That is the amount of uh, med medication applied is very important. Uh, minimum, there should be 0.5 to 1 ml. That is 10 to 20 drops per year has to be applied. Then only it will uh, give uh, expected results. Uh, particularly over cleaning should be avoided. Avoid using cotton balls and uh, uh, using the cotton swabs inside the ear by the owner that you have to insist. Specifically, whenever they come, you have to insist that. Use of topical glucocorticoids is also very important which is uh, because a very common cause is the chronic otitis because of the allergic disease. Even in case of malassezia, recently they have identified, they also create hypersensitivity reaction. So it is very, very important. Any hypersensitive reaction should be addressed with the uh, glucocorticoids. So whenever you are going to use the glucocorticoids, there is a definite improvement in the condition. Then you treat with antibiotic and other thing. So you can even do together. That's why our vets uh, most commonly, uh, they'll see the benefits uh, using glucocorticoids. So do not uh, uh, use the glucocorticoids. When cleaning of the ears alone is effective. So when you are going to have an effective solution with the cleaning of ear, no need to go for glucocorticoids. Infection are not responding for treatment. Whenever you give whatever treatment you give, there is no response means you should immediately you should not jump into glucocorticoids. And whenever there is an ulcer which is not at all healed, even if you are going to control the infection, if the ulcers are not healed, then you have to uh, avoid glucocorticoids. Then coming to topical glucocorticoids, which is very important. You have to understand that uh, the least to most potent 
this is the list of least this is the least and this is the most potent uh, glucocorticoid that is the mamitasone purate that is commonly available in human medicine uh, we can very well see in abroad they have uh, in form of free drops also i think and here uh, uh, flucinolone that is also available as ear drops in our country also that you can as as a potent and we have got uh, very much uh, as you uh, in case of acute cases we have to select these things in most potent cases of steroids in acute cases uh, whereas in chronic cases we have to go for a long term therapy in controlled we have to go for say infection everything has controlled we have to continue the therapy we have to control the stenosis and the hyperplasia and other thing so we have to advise the owner to go for uh, going for a uh, least potent like uh, triamcinolone or uh, beta beta methasone which is available with the pomisol so these things we can use and uh, we have to necessarily check uh, anti fungal agents also wherein uh, malassezia is the commonest we can very well go for clatrimazole meconazole uh, thiopentazole or acetic acid see uh, try uh, try uh, tris edta ketoconazole flush are also available so we can very well use these th agents and acaricides we can very well tackle with the ivermectin or isoxazoline groups and uh, all the uh, selamectin fipronil all these things can be used or even the permethrin groups are being used for tackling the parasitic uh, causes as a topical uh, thing then the synergistic uh, agents the synergistic agent particularly the tris cdta is a very good synergistic agent which is going to help along with the antiseptics and antimicrobials which is going to give a even an antibiotic antibiotic it is going to augment their uh, action so that is very much uh, being used and topical antiseptics uh, whenever you go for uh, seeing uh, topical antiseptics you have to go for lowering the ph of the ear canal so we have to see whether it has got acid see of course the tris cdta is itself is acid so we can very well go for an uh, acetic acid boric acid citric acid lactic acid which are in alcohol preparation aluminum hydroxide or chlorhexidin um, see these things are having a lower concentration we have we can use silver sulfur dioxide these things has to be used on micronized silver and chlorhexidin acetic acid and uh, tris edta uh, these things has to be used and in case of resistant to all antibiotics antiseptic solution alone can be used but it has to be used frequently morning afternoon night like that uh, that also can uh, help in clearing the disease need to have a contact time uh, in clean uh, clean ears and uh, use multiple times a day uh, so we have to let the uh, this ear cleanser for some time at least 5 minutes in the ear so that they will have a better penetration and action so when the whenever you are going to use uh, uh the topical therapy uh we have to use uh, uh six times whenever you are going to use only the antiseptic uh, solutions uh, they are recommending but it is practically not possible if you are not using the topical antibacterial only using antiseptic uh, then we can even go up to uh, six times a day but uh, at least we have to use uh, two times a day then uh, antimicrobials if you are going to use uh, use higher volumes that is very important and concentration of the topical uh, antibiotics has to be increased whenever you are going to use the chronic uh, arthritis uh, then uh, use uh, until one week past negative cytological results whenever you are going to use uh, we have to periodically check cytology in the cytology if you are not uh, getting any cockeye or rod then we can use one more week or uh, then we can stop whereas if you are going to use uh, pseudomonas as a thing organism and uh, there are multi drug resistant infection we have to see the cytology as well as culture result and then if it is going to be negative cytology negative culture uh, uh, then you have to use uh, further one week or uh, more than one week uh, 10 days or two weeks also you can use the same antibiotic uh, so that it will completely prevent the thing so this is the very important thing we have to remember the first line of uh, um, antibiotics and antimicrobials so the neomycin alone uh, is going to be very much useful uh, sometime uh, gentamicin is going to be useful as a first line and uh, we have to necessarily think of autotoxicity with these drugs that's why we are not commonly using this and chlorhexidine we can very well use polymyxin b is uh, has to be used 
particularly this polymyxin B active inactivated by the purulent exudate. Whenever you are going to use the polymyxin B, we have to clear the exudate by way of deep air cleansing. That is very, very important to have a better action of polymyxin B. So the polymyxin B and micronazole preparations are available that we can very much use. And clotrimazole 1%, uh, micronazole 1%, ketoconazole solutions are, can be used as uh, antimicrobials. Uh, and the second line of antibiotics, uh, tobromycin, this is all the topical antibiotics. Tobromycin, ear, ear solution also can be used for, uh, eye solution also can be used for thing ear, but we have to check the toxicity uh, of ear that has, uh, if, it, in a, if it is going to be used for a long time. Uh, same way, amikacin can be diluted with the 25 milligram per 1 ml of uh, amikacin can be mixed with the saline and uh, we can use, but uh, that also used to be uh, toxic, autotoxic that has to be checked and uh, ticarcelin that also has to be used with a caution, but it is going to help a lot. There are reports stating that this ticarcelin, even in case of pseudomonas infection, it is going to help a lot. And uh, that is having a very good uh, action of uh, this ticarcelin preparations. And third line antibiotics, there is a uh, mepirocin and phytoquinolones, ideally based, uh, based on culture reports has to be used and uh, they are uh, using even a tube of mypericin along with the sterile saline as uh, it has been uh, documented by some authors. And enterofloxin silver sulfadiacin preparations are available. And posoconazole is highly effective in treating malassezia, which is uh, not helping by way of uh, myconazole or uh, uh, other uh, antifungal uh, drugs and uh, multi-drug resistant infection. Uh, Staphylococcus and pseudomonas infection, this uh, marbifloxin, OB, orbifloxin are uh, highly useful. That is what uh, they have recorded. And uh, first resistant, fight uh, the resistance with the malassezia, particularly whenever there is a resistance in malassezia, we can very well go for posoconazole and uh, uh, meconazole on person. Treating difficult cases with a higher concentration, we have to try. And the polymyxin is a synergistic with the mechanazole that you have to understand. As I told you, we have to go in for clearing the area with the pus and other area. We have to clear with the deep uh, cleansing the ear. Then the 1% uh, terbinafen, which can be used in case of cat and not in case of dog. Because dog, uh, whenever you use the terbinafen, uh, they are not uh, orally, they are not reaching the superficial layer. Whereas in case of topical terbinafen, they can reach the top layer so that it is beneficial. So that can, if you are going for a oral, it don't be beneficial in dog because uh, the concentration may not reach much in superficial layer of the epidermis. Whereas in case of topical, it will reach. So indication of the systemic therapy, heart it is external that is severe and unresponsive to topical therapy alone. That is the indication. And concurrent otitis media, one are unable to medicate the topical therapy. Topical therapy precluded by adverse reactions and uh, marked proliferative chronic changes. If you are going to see in the clinical situation, we can very well go for uh, indication for systemic therapy. So the systemic therapy, uh, whenever you are going for oral antibiotic, we have to think about the cytology and culture before for a systemic antibiotics. Higher dose is very, very important. Duration is so important, particularly whenever you are going to use the oral medication for otitis, we have to go for a minimum one month and achieve good penetration and the middle, middle ear and bones. It has to cross through bones. So we have to select the antibiotic in such a way it should penetrate the bone. So where you can go for cytology, we can, if you are going to appreciate the cocci, very simple, if it is a cocci, we can very well go for cephalopod or cephalopodoxin which is the uh, uh, ingredient in it. And uh, at the dose rate of 10 mg per kg, or uh, you can go for cephalexin 30 mg per kg BID and uh, glindamycin 10 mg per kg BID. And in case of mixed or cocci, which is so common than the cocci alone, uh, the wherein we can go for endrofloxin, we can very well go for 10 to 20 mg up to 20 mg higher concentration. Normally we go for 5 mg per kg. Whereas here, we have to go up to 20 mg per kg body weight, wherein we cannot go for a cat. Uh, so we have to necessarily go for marbifloxin. Marbifloxin uh, also can be used in dog, but uh, here the cat uh, benefit is so uh, important. So we have to necessarily think of a 5 mg per kg body weight, which is not going to affect the retinal damage. 
uh, which is uh, normally caused by higher dose of enterprofloxacin, which is particularly when you are going to use for a longer period. So antibiotics, oral fluoroquinone, marbofloxacin at the dose of 5 to 10 mg, enterprofloxacin 10 to 20 mg, arbofloxacin, uh, arbifloxacin 10 mg per kg for 24 hours. Ciprofloxacin should not be used in dog because they are not going to get absorbed properly, 58.5% only getting uh, uh, absorbed. So the, you cannot expect to have a, a efficacy and uh, definitely they will develop bacterial resistance because of uh, uh, very low concentration uh, reaching uh, in the uh, expected site. So you have to necessarily avoid that. We can also use injectable aminoglycoside, but you have to think of autotoxicity because we are seeing a lot of cases with autotoxicity because uh, we are uh, uh, the people are using injection of aminoglycoside for a longer period they go for kidney failure also along with autotoxicity. So we have to necessarily think only in these uh, multi-drug resistant cases, we have to think of that, but we have to restrict the duration. We should not continuously do that. And antifungal agents uh, like malassezia has to be uh, treated with the antifungal agents, uh, ketoconazole, fluconazole, itraconazole. Uh, in case of uh, dog, uh, in case of uh, cat, we can very well go for tadnafen Orally, as I told you, we need not go for dog because of poor uh, penetration to by oral. Glucocorticoid and cyclosporin also can be used because uh, orally they will control, particularly in case of uh, severe inflammation, hyperplasia, and stenosis. We have to necessarily go for prednisolone at the dose rate of 1 mg per kg body weight every 24 hours. Even you can go up to 2 mg per kg body weight. Uh, but uh, we have to taper it very, uh, very uh, commonly. And uh, we have to uh, help, uh, it is going to help the reducing the pain and discomfort because one uh, very important uh, uh, thing in helping in uh, predisolan is it is also going to reduce the viscosity of the fluid which is secreted in the bullet so that it will create a lot of space so that the penetration of the medication can be achieved. So that is going to augment the faster uh, uh, improvement of the case. So the combination of the opioids and tramadol, 2 to 4 mg per kg every 24 hours will be, I mean, every uh, 8 hours will be helpful. Uh, we have to use that. And uh, we can, cyclosporin has been used, uh, 5 mg per kg body weight in severe proliferative arthritis cases also helpful in some cases. And common reasons for failure, see inadequate treatment duration of infections, inappropriate drug choices, failure to identify and manage the primary causes, failure to identify and manage the otitis media, that is very common in our practice, lack of client education, so simply we should not uh, treat and allow the, uh, allow the owner to go, so we have to tell the owner we require uh, home management and lack of follow-up visits. That is also very importantly, we have to tell the owner strictly, you have to come this time, uh, this date like that. Lack of preventive plan, prevention plan. That also very uh, uh, important reason to have a failure. So when to go for a surgery, that is very, very important question. Artic tumors, we have to go for a surgery. Chronic end-stage otitis, we have to go for a surgery. Then medical therapeutic attempts are failed. Then uh, particularly whenever there is a chronic this media, we can very well go for this lateral or vertical ear canal resection. That is the JEP operation. That is what uh, commonly we are using. But one thing here we have to remember that uh, what we are doing is uh, our, uh, vertical uh, uh, ear canal is being uh, uh, explored and uh, that is being exposed. And the horizontal uh, uh, ear canal is allowed to drain uh, directly. So whenever you are going to have a better uh, drainage and aeration, so that will augment the faster healing. But we have to remember that uh, there also you have to constantly do the air cleaning and other thing. If you are going to do the surgery and post-operatively or post-surgery, if you are not going to follow the case, then what will happen? Again, the infection will spread. And also sometime while doing the surgery itself, the, some inner, the otitis interna may be there. That may also may not be helpful in treating the cases. So we have to, once you are understanding the, with the help of clinical science, like uh, seeing the cochlear nerve damage, uh, like deafness and other thing, we have to necessarily go for thinking of a ventral bulla osteotomy or total ear canal operation and lateral bulla osteotomy. In these cases, uh, of course, we have a large number of, uh, um, uh, even we have a, 
corneal ulcers, uh, particularly before getting the uh, going for a surgery itself, we'll be having a keratoconjunctivitis sicca as a common complication. And even the corneal ulcers, uh, along with the lip, eye, and other areas, also getting affected in case of otitis media. So we have to decide a total ear canal ablation and lateral bulla osteotomy. So at the time, even when they are going to do the surgery, there may not be any vesicular nerve paralysis symptom. So after the surgery, because of the inflammation, you may have uh, one or is telling that some facial nerve problem. So once uh, no need to worry about that. Uh, Post-surgically, if you're going to give anti-inflammatory and other neural energetics, it will improve the condition. After the complete healing, everything will become all right. And even they go for toxotomy, that is they will close the eyelid and uh, so that uh, the, the moisture content will be maintained. So that also one of the techniques by which they will be maintaining the thing. So these are all the things we have to follow. And preventive ear care, that is very important. Cleaning the uh, cleaning and the drying agents for avoiding the waxes, antimicrobial air cleaners for recurrent ear infection, topical glucocorticoids, severe hyperplasia and cyanosis. We have to use the topical uh, solutions. Client education is so important, particularly lengthy process involved in the management of what I did. So you have to clearly tell the owner need for proper home therapy, that is very important. Frequent follow-up of visits has to be importantly tell to the owner. You have to uh, insist on pain management because we have forgotten this. So we have to necessarily tell about the pain management. Quality of the life has to be maintained uh, for the dog. So we have to support by way of a proper client education. Long-term prognosis and medical, medical costs has to be enlightened to the owner. Educate the clients to clean the ears and place the ear medication. Re-evaluation with the otic examination and cytology for every two to four weeks. So you have to give, uh, uh, when they, they have to come for revisit, that has to be told to the owner. So always you have to remember whenever you are going to give the treatment, we have to see that uh, they have to follow one week past uh, clinical improvement and negative ear canal cytology results. And in case of multi-drug resistant and, and pseudomonas infection, they have to see both cytology and culture results one week past negative, uh, we have to go for treating the cases. Uh, that is very, very important. So apart from that, uh, we have to have some take home message. That is uh, early detection is possible by thorough arctic examination during the physical examination of all allergic cases. That we can very well do in our clinic, what we are feeling, uh, what uh, we are failing to do is all the allergic cases, at least chronic cases, we have to also examine the aortic examination has to be done and how far the damage has been occurred, how the chronicity has been damaged the ear canal that has to be understood. Then you have to go for uh, telling everything to the owner and to go for proper plan and preventive measures. Otitis externa is a common and painful feature in all the allergic cases or even any case. All allergy is a frequent cause for chronic or recurrent otitis in dogs but not in cats that we have to understand. Atopic otitis may require regular cleaning and pulse topical therapy, even if it is going to be controlled. That is very important. Lifelong treatment is required and owner compliance is essential. Cats are more susceptible to autotoxicity. So you have to uh, not only avoiding the topical uh, preparation, so we have to minimize the topical application in cat and we have to necessarily think, uh, we have to understand that otitis media in cat is often due to upper respiratory disease. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, quite uh, in-depth elaboration and very exhaustive uh, details you have presented, Dr. Sir. Uh, I think after such a long marathon uh, presentation, you need a glass of water. And meanwhile, we go through uh, lots of comments uh, and uh, lots of uh, queries and feedbacks from our uh, customers, from our viewers. There are some uh, very interesting uh, questions and uh, information have come to us. And uh, with your permission, we would like yeah, to uh, put it on board here. Yeah, please tell me, sir. Uh, you have been elaborating from otitis uh, externa to media and then internal uh, with internal medicines aspects and the surgical aspects. Uh, 
So one of the question has come, I think, uh, which is uh, appearing quite commonly across is uh, what is the role of uh, anti-inflammatory? Basically, the systemic anesthetics in the condition of otitis. Yeah, uh, very good. It's a very good question. Uh, actually, we have to go for uh, managing the otitis uh, pain with the uh, either with the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory or with the corticosteroids. Uh, okay. With the- we will go for non steroidal anti inflammatory uh, but the problem with the uh, uh, thing is we cannot continuously give even though we can give the steroid is going to be uh, giving some uh, beneficial effects see one is uh, the it is going to reduce the inflammation apart from reducing the inflammation as i told you it will also reduce the viscosity of the mucus which has been secreted in the bullae region so whenever you are going to have a mucus secretion which is present in the bulla which is highly inflamed and it will have a more accumulation of bullae uh, mucus uh, inside uh, in the arthritis media which is very commonly seen so the once the viscosity is going to be less because of the corticosteroids you are having a free space so that uh, when we are going to apply any topical medicine these free spaces will be very much useful to have a better penetration of this topical medication either antibiotic or anti fungal or whatever you are going to do that so in that way even the steroid that will help a lot in improving the condition that's why i prefer to go for glucocorticoids okay okay like the question was more pertinent to systemic anesthetics like we have meloxicam and tolfenamic acids then we have flunixin also so yeah, we, what, what, what would be your uh, comment like yeah if it is going to be a uh, Uh, animal is already having a hyperadrenocortism as a problem in those cases so wherein you may not be in a position to go for uh, corticosteroids so wherein you have to go for this anti inflammatory as a choice we can very well go for it and uh, side by side you have to monitor the toxicity even the nephrotoxicity or autotoxicity uh, no, nephrotoxicity particularly or sometimes they go for see uh, they have to understand that uh, Uh, they may if you are going to use for a longer period they may even go for bleeding into the stomach or intestine that also has to be okay. uh, tackled okay. along with the antacids or anything even you should not go for both together so whenever you are going to use uh, meloxicam you should not go for uh, steroid so when you are going to use that also there is chance for getting a severe internal bleeding that uh, will have animal will have a black species feces so that is very very important thing we have to take precaution I think it's clear. Okay, to... okay. I think the message is quite uh, clear okay. that we should not have uh, both uh, NSAID and steroidal together. Yes. Preferably steroidal systemically. Mm-hmm. In case you have to go for a NSAID and malonex, or we have like Maxtol or a Flun- uh, Unisif, which would be more useful. Yeah. Right. Uh, the another uh, viewer has asked a question. Uh, Uh, what would be the line of treatment uh, with a different drug synergies and uh, agonism in small animal i think you are you are touched uh, about this uh, drug synergies in one of your slide yeah yeah so it is very uh, importantly understand that the tris cdta is a very wonderful synergistic effect it can have a synergistic effect with the chlorhexidine or any any antiseptic or antibiotic or even antifungals any antimicrobials will have a very good synergistic effect so okay. that help a lot to penetrate and have a good uh, thing apart from that if it is going to have antagonism as i told you the steroid uh, with the uh, meloxicam or any non steroidal we should not use the antagon- because they will create problem so that in that way we can avoid right right and, and i think uh, toxicity we have to remember the toxicity whenever you are going to use the amikacin or any uh, gentamicin for a longer period it can also develop a toxicity apart from the toxicity of a year it also can develop nephrotoxicity that also we have to understand and uh, uh, be cautious while using these uh, preparations yes, yes. Uh, thank you uh, there is another uh, question uh, from one of our uh, participant uh, because this uh, otitis also requires uh, intervention of a lot of devices like otoscope so does a uh, hand otoscope really help Uh, and does it help in differentiating otitis media externa and uh, otitis internal while uh, w- working in the clinic 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, even though the fiber optic otoscope or video endoscopes are having their own advantages like uh, clarity and uh, we have got everything, we cannot afford to have uh, all the practitioners are in the early stage of practice. We may not be in a position to go for this type of uh, instruments. Whereas handheld otoscopes are very cheaper and we can very well go for uh, opting it. Uh, to understand and clear this, uh, particularly for deep cleaning and uh, viewing the, uh, the assessing the uh, otitis externa or otitis uh, media, so that we can very much go for clearing the uh, debris or pus or whatever it is, and then we can okay. very well see the tympanic membrane whether it has got mm -hmm. ruptured or not. That in that way it will be very much useful. We can very well go for handheld otoscope. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, another question has come, uh, which is very breed specific, that how to deal with a chronic otitis uh, media, particularly in the German Shepherds. I mean, all otitis media recurrent nature. Yeah, yeah, it has got uh, the breed, particularly it has got a lot of uh, problems, particularly in India, uh, because where we have got tropical climate, where because of that, we may have a lot of humidity problem and it may have more warmthness or more secretion of the ear canal. So because of that, uh, if uh, owner is going to neglect or uh, if we are going to miss, uh, even particularly, you might have seen a lot of uh, German shepherds are prone for even allergic dermatitis like food allergy or atopy also. These factors are making the animal, even though it is having the erect ears, these are all the factors which make the animals and uh, uh, they are uh, making uh, worse for the condition. Uh, that is why okay. we have to be very careful, particularly in the erect uh, uh, German shepherds. We have to see whenever it is going to have a change, whether it is drooping, whether it is having pain while touching, while clinically examining, when it is going to have a pain, immediately go for a thorough otoscopic examination. So I that think, yes. Better. One needs to be more careful when it is more genuine breed, I think. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, one viewer uh, has asked a very specific question that he, uh, otite, a difference, uh, what is the line of treatment in the otitis interna and uh, otitis externa? What would you recommend as a line of treatment? So, as I told you, the otitis externa in the early stage, yes. if you are going to identify, we have to clear the secondaries first. The secondary definitely by cytology, you can understand. It may have a bacteria or it may have a uh, fungus that is yeast, malassezia and uh, bacteria can be cleared very well. But uh, not only clearing the secondary is important, very important thing is we have to clear the basic cause that is the primary cause that is the allergy cause which is more common. As I, I have told you that 80% of the cases are allergic cases. It may be that you have to ask the question to the owner whether they are using any ear drops whether they are going for any food which is having allergy or it is having any atopy, by thorough clinical examinations, we can clear all these things. And apart from that, otitis media, because if it is going to exceed six months, we can very well completely, blindly, we can say it will definitely have otitis media. So in these cases, it is very, very important to assess the severity of the disease. So for assessing the severity, otoscopic examination is so important whether it has got a hyperplasia, the perpetuating factors are playing a very important role or not, that we have to identify. Whether any hyperplasia is developed or stenosis is developed or any other problem is going on there that we have to identify only by autoscopic examination. So by doing that, we have to identify when in these otitis media or interna, we have to take a culture without going for culture or deep cytology the otitis media area, we have to go for taking a cytology, not in the otitis externa or in the uh, pinna of the ear. If you are going to do, definitely the flora is going to change if, uh, one from other. So it is very, oh, very okay. important to take the culture. That's why even we are going, uh, taking a culture from by meringeotomy. So just uh, we are puncturing the thing with the, even the TAM catheter can be used for, uh, 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 for uh, puncturing the uh, tympanic membrane uh, at the five o'clock position and then we can aspirate if the aspiration is not successful we can even infuse certain saline 0.5 ml saline and uh, mix it and uh, aspirate it you can get it so once you are going to get that you can very well go for culturing it after getting the culture and antibiotic test for the 48 hours we can very well sort the 
treatment so that it will be definitely helpful that is very important apart from the chronic arthritis extension or uh, treating with antibiotic and uh, this thing antifungals we have to treat uh, we have to consider the both uh, systemic and uh, uh, topical application and you have to always consider about the uh, toxicity involved uh, we have to select the thing accordingly if it is going to be a coca uh, we can very well go for cefepodoxin which is so convenient because we have to give only one time uh, separate or uh, separate excel is going to be very convenient apart from that we have to think about the uh, giving the steroid which is very very important the steroid is going to help as i told you it is going yes. to reduce the inflammation and also it is going to reduce the viscosity of the mucus which is secreted inside the bullet so that is a very important Perfect. yes i think i think uh, very uh, very pertinent answer and i think uh, what we will do that at the end of this program uh, we will be sending this uh, uh, reading material to all our viewers i think uh, you have elaborated lot of internal medicine for each of the conditions so we will be sending to all of you all the viewers uh we have received almost more than uh, 375 uh, feedbacks and questions it is practically not possible to touch each and every question but we are picking up some of the interesting questions uh as we are moving to the end of this program one last question dr saab uh, which is uh, quite different and quite interesting question just has come uh when performing the teka with a lbo surgery that is a total ear uh, ablation uh, with a lateral bulla osteotomy whether it is feasible to the small animal and if it is performed how many days will it take for animal to restore the normal hearing or almost normal hearing see so what is your uh, take about this see total ear ablation and osteotomy means we are going for deafness animal Uh, wherein you yes. are not getting the hearing hearing is not the question at all particularly we have done in my practice uh, i have done along with uh, particularly the main surgeon is l nagarajan he is a very great surgeon in the country he has done the wonderful work in our clinic uh, four uh, uh, two cocker spaniel uh, american cocker spaniels and two english cocker spaniel uh, we have done uh, only in uh, cocker spaniels we have done this uh, total ablation of ear canal and uh, osteotomy so this is uh, because the osteotomy has to be uh, done because uh, the changes uh, degenerative changes you can expect to have in the uh, in that area that's why we have to go for removing the bones uh, which are affected and also we have to remove the structures which are affected that's why total ear ablation so the no question of hearing but the thing is the follow up that is uh, as i told you the side effects uh, facial uh, paralysis or even we can go for uh, identifying the uh, this thing uh, the the we have to aim for quality of life see the other ear is going to be all right we have to follow up the case so the quality of life has to be improved uh, we are uh, uh, generally it will be unilateral uh, so we have to think of osteomyelitis see uh, in case of ortho problem osteomyelitis how we are treating we are treating for a longer period likewise here uh, just by simply taking away the thing is not uh, going to be sufficient in any chronic arthritis we have to think of osteomyelitis like like that the approach should be here in chronic arthritis so in that uh, you have to continuously give the uh, antibiotic even after the ear uh, ablation uh, total ear canal ablation and osteomyelitis uh, i mean osteo osteotomy we have to necessarily uh, continue the antibiotic till it have a perfect healing and uh, it should uh, uh, continue the normal life so don't think about that uh, hearing in that particular year that is the thing. so your your suggestion is to look for a more quality life post surgery i yes. think yes thank you doctor sir thank you so much and thank you all our uh, valuable uh, uh, participants thank you so much the session has gone beyond slightly a timeline but i think it has been quite interesting because uh, dermatology is always a very interesting subjects neither speaker can stop to talk nor the viewers stop to listen to you so i think uh, we will come up with more pet pod editions uh, with a more uh, interesting subjects thank you dr nagarajan for your valuable time okay. sparing sunday and uh, thank you so much everybody now we are closing the programs Uh, we have received each of your comments feedbacks and queries questions everything 
we uh, we are our team will be very soon uh, coming back to you with a message to you uh, individually for you and the speaker will be answering each of your questions rest assured and uh, that will be sent to you in your email box so once again thank you say uh, thank you so much stay safe stay at home and uh, take care thank you we are closing the program thank you